The virtual campground is a community of RVers. We gather around the campfire to share stories, information, and travel tips to help you on your next adventure. Hello there, we're coming to you from McMinnville, Oregon, mm -hmm. in the Willamette Valley. Did Damn I it. say that right? I think you did. I never <laughs> say it right, so I trust you. So we're out here enjoying some wine and uh, had some friends come out and join us and wanted to give you a little taste, so to speak, of what it's like out here. So go pour yourself a glass. That's right. Go grab some Pinot Noir. From right Oregon. There. So yes, because that's what they mostly grow here. Now you can find some Shards. We found some yep. good Sauvignon Blanc and a few other reds, but overwhelmingly you're going to find Pinot Noir. So if you don't like Pinot Noir, this is probably not the place for you. Though we have discovered there is a great variety yes. in the varietal of yes. Pinot Noir. That's right. We've been to about 12, 13 wineries, which is about, um, I think it's like 1.7% of the 700 wineries in there this There are eight. a lot of wineries. <laughs> now the interesting thing is, it's not like Napa Valley where no. they're very condensed and very close together. Uh, these are spread out a good distance. Yeah, because you have actually this whole AVA is called what? Well, Lamet. <laughs> yes, but within that you have some sub AVAs sub -AVA. like Yam Hill or Carlton, Newburgh, uh, where we are actually is its own as well, McMinnville and Dundee. So you have these subs, and within the subs you have a hundred. So just even from where we're standing right now here at McMinnville. We have about 150 wineries within 25 minutes of us. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty yeah. incredible. There are a couple of the AVAs, like when we went um, to Newburgh, there were some that were basically up and down a road, but you wouldn't walk it up and down it. Um, and very much so, you need reservations. Yep. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> you need reservations. Even in some of the tasting rooms that are in downtown McMinnville, you need to have reservations. Um, they're pretty particular about it. And they do charge almost to 100%. Now, I haven't been obviously to all of them, um, but 1.7%. <laughs> but a lot of them do charge. Mm -hmm. They will let you get it free if you buy some bottles of wine, yeah. you know, and that varies from two to three for one tasting or two tasting. So you just have to check it out. And they're, they're a little on the pricey side, I yeah. thought. Um, it's been a long time since we've been to Napa, which is the one we know the best, but we have been to the Finger Lakes and Michigan in the last couple of years, and I don't remember them really charging us great amounts. I don't remember that, that much. I mean, we had one that was a you know, very expensive tasting fee mm -hmm. for the group of us, and but you know whatever we bought uh, got rebated, yeah, so to speak, against that. against it, so it was kind of like you got three bottles, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so you were prepaying <laughs> for Yes, for multiple bottles. But there yes. were six of us, so that helped. So it worked out. You can find wines from 25 to a hundred and something dollars oh, here. Yeah. So there is a lot to do in this area, but let's admit it. You come to this area to taste wine. That's right. <laughs> there are some other things that you can do and we'll talk a little bit about those, but tasting wine and eating good food are top of the priority list. So let's talk about the wineries that we went to. Um, I'm gonna ask you. So as far as the most beautiful winery, which one would you say? The winery itself, and, and I'm, you're gonna have to help me with the names, mm -hmm. but it was the one where we set out picnic tables and had the beautiful view up the hill with the, with the Stoller. vineyard. Stoller. That's right, Stoller is a big operation, a little less personal than some of the other vineyards mm -hmm. we went to. Much less but, personal. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't get bothered about joining a club or buying no, bottles. No, no, I mean, you, you literally went there. I mean, people, there were uh, 50, 100, Hundreds, lots yeah. of people hanging out, parties, they had a restaurant on site. Mm -hmm. It was, it's a big operation, but it has, it's just a stunning property. It's yeah. sort of like the Disney World of, of <laughs> wineries out here. It is, if you want to go to a winery and feel like I am on a winery, this is, if I ever lived on a winery, this is what it'd be like. The Stoller would be the great place to go. Um, it is like, I think it was a $25 tasting fee there. And if you bought two bottles, then you got a free tasting, but you could also just buy it by the glass. They also had picnic items on food that you could order, yep. um, not bring your own food, but you could order some there and they served it. They had a couple of restaurants on site too. I was a little confused as to how you got in. I guess you had to make a reservation there. We were just sitting outside. So from Stoller, you thought that was the most beautiful and it was stunning as far as like picture perfect yeah, winery. Just the winery itself, yes, the grounds. The grounds. Yeah. But the one I thought had the best views and was a really pretty was Brooks yeah. Winery. It was a beautiful building and then they had multiple tiers you could sit at, mm -hmm. including a really nice patio out 
closer to the vines and it had a beautiful garden. They had a gardener on staff who she it had vegetables in it and herbs but also some beautiful flowers and then the really cool part we got to sit out on that lower balcony or mm -hmm. lower patio i guess with our bottle of wine and um look at mount hood yeah yeah beautiful view of the mountains and the, the vineyards beneath us and it was just a really stunning, stunning. place to hang yeah. out mount hood and mount jefferson we found yes, out right. yes so we were debating and on the no names of the mountains and we discovered those that's right so those were our two favorite from a beautiful perspective. Mm -hmm. The other one close runner up is Domain Druin. I thought that one, again, if you wanna see what a winery can look like, oh, very yeah. elegant winery, this one. This one you're gonna sit out on the patio and feel like you're in a French chateau. Yeah, and, and that's because the family is from France. They are from France, that's exactly right. The, the tasting that we did combined the local grapes, uh, or compared. compared the local grapes to grapes in France. Yep, the wines, they, they, you know, Pinot Noir to a French Burgundy, from, you know, the um, Chardonnay to the Pinot Gris. So that was an interesting tasting, just to kind of see New World versus Old World. Same family, same um, actual winemaker. She flies back and forth between France and Oregon for harvests and winemaking, which is pretty stunning. But that is a gorgeous facility, especially if you like that French Chateau look. Yeah. It had some nice gardens to walk through as well. So that was really lovely. One of the ones that I thought was amazing to go to because of the intimacy of it was the JL Kiff. Okay. And yeah. that was actually here in McMinnville. And that was a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. they, they're the only ones, they're the only yeah, employees. Yeah, he planted all the vines. And when we pulled up, he was out up in the middle the of the field <laughs> working on some things, trimming uh, leaves and, and what have you. And um, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. That was a very intimate experience with the owners of the land. Yep. Uh, and it was great. Joel and Lori are their names. J.L. Kiff is their last name. And their children actually designed the labels. They have very artistic children. They designed Beautiful the labels. labels, yes. And they also had a song for every vintage, That's as right. we learned. That's right. We got to hear one of the songs. Take a good wine and make it better. That was a great, that was a great stay that again, yeah. having Lori and Joel, Joel took us up into the vineyard. Very educational mm -hmm. because yeah, Joel took us up there and, and told us about their wines and their vines and how they've been harvesting and what they do with them. And it's, it was a great visit. Yes. Right now we happen to be here and we had learned this when we were at the Ken Wright uh, vineyard, but that the grapes are actually why we're here in, what is this, June, flowering. So in 105 days. They will be harvested. Exactly. That was interesting to even learn that they time it from flowering yeah. to the actual harvesting is 105 days. They said they could Pinot adjust North. depending on weather, rain, or what have you, but that's their marker. We know somebody that knew somebody. <laughs> this is one of those people you know, right? That's right. Um, that we got a very special tour with the Ken Wright Winery. Right. Our friends came in town. They were friends with some people that knew the Ken Wright folks and um, set us up with a wonderful VIP tour. VIP, yeah. We yes. got even taken up to one of the uh, one of their vineyards that they leased from a farmer and they got to hear all that story but the yeah. other thing i thought was really neat about ken wright was this is in carlton downtown carlton was their tasting room and it's in an old railroad right. station that they had bought along with most of the block of the city <laughs> it seemed Quite like and they had renovated this old station into this gorgeous tasting yeah. room the outside area had fire pits at almost every table. Yeah, lots of tables. Yeah. And it was it was a lovely uh, place to hang out. And if you join the uh, membership there, you can stay in their right. lofts yeah, above they, the they bought shops. a building <laughs> just a block from the depot. He's also got other wineries that have now moved into Carlton. It was a great little downtown, great area to go visit as well. The other place we went to in the Carlton area, this was the one that was a very special um, tasting, the E-I-E-I-O. Yes. As you can imagine, his last name is McDonald. It was a um, little different. That's the one that I mentioned earlier. You pay at a pretty large fee to just do the tasting, but then the fees get rebated back. And, but it was really neat. We went to his house. Had he a big a, charcuterie board. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> he had sort of a mother-in-law house uh, next to his uh, that he's converted into his tasting room. And it was just us in there, and, and mm -hmm. uh, he explained. He answered every question, and mm -hmm. some of the people we were with, uh, yeah, some friends of, of ours, had lots of questions. <laughs> uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Ask away, but uh, but he was very patient and answered all of them, and uh, really good times. Mm -hmm. 
And then the last one we went to in the Carlton area was again a nice intimate um, setting with the actual vintner and that was at Monk's Gate. Yeah. And she was lovely. Uh, the Lady Pouring was the actual owner of mm -hmm. it. She had bought it from her parents. So, and it was just down the hill from the Trappist Abbey, which where we learned is where they store a lot of wine. That's right. They have a lot of storage. That's a great story. Ask her about that story um, because it's really cool how they put a gate in there for the monks in order to get through the land. And so really cool. Because that's where they would take their walks. And so that's thus the name of the winery, mm -hmm. Monk's yeah. Gate. That's right. But my favorite winery that we went to has got to be Dusky Goose. Goose. Oh, yeah, Dusky Goose was really, really nice. Beautiful home. Uh, it was just essentially a tasting room. So, yes. uh, you know, it looked like sort of like a home, very contemporary, overlooking the vineyards, just a stunning view. And a view. nice view out over the hills yeah. and the vineyards. And then Sharon, that was our um, tasting master, so to speak, poor, she was amazingly um, knowledgeable and just really down to earth and nice and the wines are really good i enjoyed the rosé and the chardonnay there which if unusual. you know me is highly unusual i don't usually like rosés at all and rarely ever like chardonnays so um that's actually what we bought there the other one that was really interesting um was the bergstrom because i really enjoyed mm. the story there it was a great story but also beautiful ground we did some video there but the story was really neat. A retired doctor, very successful in the Portland area, wanted to just retire to this home that was in a stunning uh, area. But then Mr. Erath, Dick Erath, mm -hmm. came by one day and sort just Sort of the father the, of the Pinot yeah, Noir. Yeah, he's <laughs> very well known in, in, in this area and just sort of said to him, look, you've got beautiful property here, lots of acreage facing the correct way. South. What are you gonna plant? And that sort of planted the seed, so to speak, of, of them starting a family business after he retired, brought his son in. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was a really story, very successful. It was a great testing, super high end. What was interesting there was they did a pairing with food. So really small bites, um, just, just one, one grouping or two, two groupings, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, two different servings, but really nice pairing with high end food, beautiful wines, uh, lovely setting, really nice. It was very nice. Didn't like the wines as much as some no, of the other wines we favorites. had tried, but yeah. um, I think if you like higher end Pinot Noirs, that one might be your, your one. Yeah. <laughs> just apparently not that mm -hmm. person. Those were the main wineries we've been to. We, we've also been to a few tasting rooms. We've been to some restaurants. There is no lack of having wine in this area. Yeah. Restaurant wise, some in McMinnville that we've been to that we highly recommend is Thistle. Mm -hmm. Great cocktails there, really nice food, farm to table kind of food. Um, also Humble Spirit, they actually have their own farm and most of the food came from their farm. That was a really great restaurant as well. And then one of our favorite restaurant experiences, I would put it, is, was the one in Carlton at Park and Main. Yep. We went there to meet um, the friends of our friend and ended up meeting Ken Wright himself, the, the vintner that we mentioned earlier that had bought most of Carlton, it seemed. And uh, he was a delight, He's so knowledgeable, um, has done so much for the Pinot Noir Oregon um, yeah, so well respected, industry. Uh, yeah, yes. Everybody we talked to. Really got to learn a lot about the geology. Mm -hmm. We never had learned about the what was it? Lava the, rock. Uh, the, and the, the, the mother marine or, sediment yeah. and the mother, you know, it's called no, parent, it's parent, parent material. material. <laughs> yeah. So look that up. Yeah. <laughs> Learn that. That was very generous of him to it really was. take us under his wings. And, show and, us sure. and it was good pizza, by the way. No, oh, yeah. Pizza. pizza. Park in Maine has great pizza. The other pizza that I saw, we saw, didn't get to taste because we went to Mac Market here in McMinnville. Mm -hmm. There's a really nice restaurant, very kind of avant garde. Um, called the Hayward Restaurant with Chef Carrie. She is doing um, very globally inspired new Northwest yeah, food. It was, it was a very different kind of menu. And it very was eclectic. old shoe factory. Is that yeah, what we heard? shoe factory. An old shoe factory that they've renovated into this coffee shop slash bar restaurant. Um, there was a, a shop there for plants and other accoutrements. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Some cool stuff in yeah there. and the pizza looked awesome yeah. very large but yeah that would be a fun spot they also do live music there from time to time we um heard so mm -hmm. it, that's another reason and very walkable that's the great thing about downtown yeah. McMinnville highly walkable you park your car and you can go just about everywhere yeah. around that area our friends were staying in the Airbnb and we could walk from their Airbnb over to Main Street 
um, where we did one morning walk over for breakfast at the mm-hmm. Crescent Cafe. Very good breakfast. Yep. And one night, you and I, before they got here, went to La Rambla. Yes. And yeah, that really was good. delicious. Um, great paella. Yeah, yeah. More Spanish inspired menu and wines. And really, really, I, you know, that really surprised me. It was super good. The paella was good. The wine was fantastic. So, mm-hmm. really nice time. Um, but though, for those of you that are not as much into wine, do know there are several breweries around here as well. Mm-hmm. We went to one at the grain station. Um, I've seen several microbreweries around including one that is a brewery that the beers are brewed by Benedictine monks. That's cool. That's very cool. Hopefully so, we'll get to go about it. Yes. Some other great spots definitely to stop in. When we were in Newburgh, we stopped for lunch at a place called Red Hills Market. That's worth a stop just by itself. Yeah. It was really very cool. There's a cheese market in that area, or cheese store in that area too, called Good Company Cheese. Good Cheese mm-hmm. Company, something one of those, like something that. Like yeah. that. Also, highly recommend that. So, those are some highlights that we can recommend. So there were a few coffee shops that we liked, and there was a tea shop. Yes. That you really like. Velvet liked. Monkey. Lots highly of recommend. Over 200 on. teas. You walk down into the basement level, right on Main Street. Um, I think it's Third Street. Third Street. Which seems odd. It should be Main Street. It might be. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, right there on the main drag and uh, walk down to a basement level, neat tea shop, lots of varieties of tea. And then right across the street from that was the uh, Union Block Coffee Company. Mm-hmm. So I hung out there, good Wi-Fi and uh, good chai tea and other types of coffee drinks. So really good. My favorite chai though was at Flag & Wire. Mm-hmm. They had a really good chai there, just in case you want it. That's over by the grain. Uh, the beer place, and that yep. was that renovated area not far from Mac Market. So, again, really good coffee shops there. The other recommendation is on that same main street in McMinnville, there's a fun um, grocery store, Harvest Fresh. If you're gluten free, I highly recommend the Franz brand of bread, and they have it on the shelves. <laughs> they usually have to order it. Yep. That's it's made here in That's Oregon. Major. Oh, and they have a fabulous farmer's market on Thursday afternoon. So, highly recommend going to that. One of the better farmer's markets I've been to, especially here recently, uh, really nice, nicely done. Lots of beautiful strawberries were in season right now. The strawberries I mean, were incredible. Like yeah. that's what strawberries are supposed to taste like. Yeah. They were beautiful, beautiful and delicious. And then they had peonies that were in full bloom. That was gorgeous. The other great thing to do, which happens to be right next door to our campground, Evergreen, Aviation and Space yeah, Museum. Yeah, this is pretty incredible. Three really large buildings full Huge of place. airplanes. So Riding there's a bike, bike path that goes <laughs> right here. And so uh, we've ridden our bikes over here and uh, looked in the windows, but uh, Spruce Goose is one of the yep. planes here. Yep. So that's really cool. Uh, and the third building has a 747 on top or mm-hmm. something like that. And then it is actually a water slide. So that whole building is a water park. And I guess somehow you get up into that plane and you can, you can see Slide the slides down coming out of yep. it. <laughs> kind of fun. Yep. So in the campground that we're staying at is called Old, Sta- Old, Old Stone, Stone Village. Village. Yes. Yeah. It is ginormous. Mm-hmm. Um, about two thirds of it are permanent homes. Yeah. Yeah. The RV part of it's not that big. Um, and this is very convenient to McMinnville and to quite a few of the places oh we gosh. went. So it's a great location. I mean, here. from this campground, Old Stone campground, I would tell you that you're within 15 minutes of almost everything you want to do. Great Wi-Fi, really nice level spots. They are adding on a huge section that goes up to the highway. So if you do come, make sure you're a little bit back. The highway is a pretty busy highway. Yeah. So I would imagine for some of those that are right on the highway, it will be a little loud. Yeah. But they're building a new clubhouse and new facilities, I think, with the RV section. So it looks like it's going to be really large and nice. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there are some trees. So if you are mm-hmm. a Starlink user, then um, there are some spots that are a little more open. We have a completely open view to the sky. So our, our Wi-Fi here from Starlink has been fantastic. Yep. Well, that's it. I think that we need to go have a glass of wine now. I think so. We're in the middle of a beautiful vineyard. I guess uh, we should go. Uh, grab us some wine and, and uh, cheers to a beautiful time here in McMinnville in the Willamette Valley. Very good. <laughs> Bye for now.